Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to our online lessons for physical education of MAPI Grade 9. This is your host, Ma'am Susana Bibulan, welcoming you back. Our third quarter lesson is all about information on festivals and their respective dances, and also on how to dance these festivals. As you can see on the screen, some of these festivals have been shown to you. Next, we are going to learn about the static and dynamic stretching exercises. The skill involved like the locomotor and the non-locomotor skills. Then comes the main topic, festival and festival dances. After finishing this course, you are expected to the following learning competencies and they are the following undertake physical activity and illness and assessment rather illness assessment execute the skill involved in the dance you ready do you know what are being shown the philippines is home to the sum of the most festive celebrations there is. This is why the Department of Tourism once promoted a slogan that said, It is more fun in the Philippines. And true to its natures, rather nature, the Philippines showcases festivals far livelier, far more colorful, breathtaking and even at far memorable with any other festivals on earth different places in the philippines celebrate life with festivals in honor of a patron saint the changing of seasons the bountiful harvest the resiliency or toughness against a tragedy the fight against formidable foes the birth of mutual understanding or the showcase of nature's best tastes. These festivals, as a celebration of life, are accompanied by merrymaking and street dances, much like a Madrigas with its carnival festive mood or of the rose parade, heralding roses of different varieties. And your task is to dance to say so at least to one of these festival dances. Then, let's go and know these festivals. Oh, I almost forgot. Before we do any, any of these activities, let us try that brain of your first with the following review lessons. A man is running. Another man making push-up. And a lady is stretching her body sideways. What are they doing? Yes, they are doing an exercise. And here are other examples of activities we do before doing another activity. It is a must that you do some of this. Exercise may prevent an injury or its onset when done before an activity and done
Christ is done. And here are examples of dynamic stretching exercises. Shoulder circumduction, walking knee to chest, straight leg kick, back pedal jog, butt kick, lunge, and karyoka. And now, we will discuss about the skills involved in doing exercises. This skill are the locomotor and the non-locomotor skills. Locomotor skills are the skills that involve movements or changing of location or pace, while the non-locomotor skills do not involve movements. Here are some examples of a locomotor skills. Step, walk, run, and jump. Here are some examples of the non-locomotor skills. Flexion, extension, contraction, release, collapse, recover, protection, and twist and now we come to the main main subject of our lesson the festival and their respective dances let us start with this one ati atihan festival the ati atihan festival is a philippine festival held annually in january in honor of the santo nino holy child or infant jesus in several towns of the province of Aklan, Panay Island. The biggest celebration is held during the third Sunday of January in the town of Calibo, the province capital. The name Ati Atihan means to imitate Ati, the local name of the Aita people, the first settler of Panay Island and other parts of the archipelago. The festivity was originally a pagan celebration to commemorate the barter of Panay for the Aitas or Aita rather accepted gift from Borneian chieftain called Tatu, who fled with their family to escape a tyrannical ruler in exchange for being allowed to dwell in the Aita's lands. They celebrated with dancing and music, with the Borneas having painted their bodies with suit to show their gratefulness and camaraderie with the Aita who had dark skin. Later on, the festivity was given a different meaning by the church by celebrating the acceptance of Christianity as symbolized by carrying an image of the Holy Child or Infant Jesus during the procession. Dinagyang Festival The Dinagyang Festival is a famous and religious and cultural festival in Iloilo City, Philippines, held on the fourth Sunday of January or right after the Sinulog in Cebu and the Ati Atihan Festival in Calibo, Aklan. Dinagyang received honor and regarded as a world-class festival and dubbed as the queen of festivals in the Philippines. Sinulog Festival The Sinulog Santo Niño Festival is an annual cultural and religious festival held on the third Sunday of January in Cebu City and on the fourth Sunday of January in Carmen, Cebu and is the center of the Santo Nino Catholic celebration in the Philippines. The festival is considered to be the first and queen of festivals in the Philippines with every celebration of the festival routinely attracting around 1 to 2 million people from all over the Philippines every year. Aside from the religious aspect of the festival, Sinulog is also famous for its street parties, 
usually happening at night before and at the night of the main festival. Panagbenga Festival Pan Panagbenga Festival Translated Flower Festival is a mo month long annual flower occasion occurring in Baguio. The term is of Kankane origin, meaning season of blooming. The festival, held in February, was created as a tribute to the city's flowers and as a way to rise up from the devastation of the 1990 Luzon earthquake. The festival includes clothes that are covered mostly with flowers not unlike those used in Pasadena Rose Parade. The festival also includes street dancing, presented by dancers clad in flower-inspired costumes, that's in, that's, that is inspired by the Bendian, an Ibaloy dance of celebration that came from the Cordilleras. Mascara Festival The word mascara is coined by the late artist Ellie Santiago from Mas, multitude of people. The Spanish word cara means face. Thus, form, forming mascara, a multitude of faces. The word is also a pan of mascara, Filipino for mask, itself from Spanish mascara. Since it is a prominent feature of the festival and are always adorned with smiling faces, giving rise to Bacolod being called the City Smile. The festival first began in 1980 during a period of crisis. The province relied on sugarcane as its primary agricultural crops and the price of sugar was at an all-time low, low due to the introduction of sugar substitute like high fructose corn syrup in the United States. This was the first mascara festival and a time of tragedy. On April 22 of the year, the inter-island vessel MB Don Juan carrying many migrants including those belonging to prominent families in Bacolod City, collide with the tanker Tacloban Sea and sunk in Tabla Strait of Mindoro while en route from Manila to Bacolod, which resulted in 18 lives lost and 115 missing. The counter the effect of these strategies the festival is born. Kadayawan Festival The Kadayawan Festival is an annual festival in the city of Tabao in the Philippines. Its name derives from the friendly greetings, Madayaw, from the Tabawenyo word meaning good, valuable, superior, or beautiful. The festival is a celebration of life, a thanksgiving for the gifts of nature, the wealth of culture, the bounties of harvest, and serenity of living. Previously, this festival held in the third week of August every year, which was highlighting the 11 tribes of Davao City. In 2019, the celebration was extended and held from 2 to 31 August. In 2020, Katayawan Festival was celebrated from 10 to 17 August. Kaamulan Festival Kaamulan Festival is an ethnic cultural festival held annually in Malaybalay City, Bukid Noon in the Philippines from the second half of February to March 10. The anniversary date of the foundation of Bukid Noon as a province in 1917. It is held to celebrate the culture, 
and tradition of the seven ethnic tribal groups. Bukidnon, Higawanon, Talaandig, Manobo, Matigsalug, Tigwahanon, and Umayamnon that originally inhabit the province. It is the only authentic ethnic festival in the Philippines. The Higantes Festival is a local festival held annually in Angono, Philippines, where hundreds of giant paper mache puppets are paraded, representing the common people's mockery on the bad agenda, which is land owners of the past during Spanish colonial rule. It has evolved into also celebrating the Feast of Pope St. Clement I every 22nd and 23rd November, the Philippines. Moriones Festival Moriones Festival is a Lenten festival held annually on Holy Week on the island of Marinduque, Philippines. The Moriones are men and women in costumes and masks reflecting replicating rather the guard of biblical Roman soldiers as interpreted by local folks. The Mariones tradition has inspired the creation of other festivals in the Philippines where cultural practices is turned into street festivals. It is a colorful festival celebrated on the island of Marinduque in the Philippines. The participants use Morion mask to depict the Roman soldiers and Syrian mercenaries within the story of the Passion of the Christ. The mask has, was named after the 16th and 17th century Morion helmet. The Moriones refers to the mask and costume penitents who march uh, around the town for seven days searching for long minutes to be beheaded after becoming a believer of Christ, whom he struck with a lance on the side and pierced the later heart. Blood and water poured out of the wound and sprinkled on one of his eyes, which was blind, that later was able to see. He went on tongue shouting praises on Christ, for the miracle thus earning the ire of the Roman heads who ordered him killed by beheading. Pahiyas Festival Every May 15, the townsfolk of Lukban Quezon do, do their houses with fruits, vegetables, and colorful hippie, a lip-shaped Popper made of rice and dyed with food coloring in celebration of the Pahiyas festivals. The word Pahiyas was derived from the word Payas, which means direct decoration or to decorate. The reason behind such practice dates back to the 15th century when farmers used to offer their harvest at the foot of Mount Panahaw. Over time, they brought their farm produce at the church in honor of the town's patron saints, Saint Isidore the Laborer, who is the patron saint of farmers, laborer, and peasants. Lichon Festival, the Parada ng Lichon, or Roasted Pig Parade. A festival you must see in Balayan, Batanga. The celebration is held annually on June 24 and the feast day of San Juan, Saint John the Baptist. The John is one of the Batangas delicacy and even in other provinces in the Philippines. It's a main dish most Batangueños have for celebration or fiestas. According to the old figure, the chon was served before the Spanish arrived in the Philippines. The dish became a symbol of Batangas traditions 
to serve the John Jury celebration. How are we going to categorize the dance of this festival? Here are some ways how this festival been categorized. Artistic dances, ritual ceremonial dances, and recreational dances. Technological dances, social dances, and under this are the ballroom dances and folk dances. While others, for an easier way to do it, they place this festival. It is due to the fact that a patron saint is venerated on the dates of each of these occasions. And the non-religious festivals are as follows. Panagbenga, Maskara, Kagayawan, Kaamula. Were you able to learn them all? If not, don't worry. You can always go back and review them through this video lesson. And now, I think we could proceed with our quiz to find out how much you had learned of our lesson. Are you ready? For your quiz, here is what you are going to do. Answer the assessment of multiple choice on page 19 of your PE module. For your activities, please answer the following. Activity number one, keeping your goal on page 16. Next, activity number two, sort me out, found on the same page. And lastly, activity number three, let us explore, which is found on page 17. And for your assignment, study, review, first aid, festival dances steps. Let's move and be fit, found on page 18. This concludes our lesson on module 1 of the third quarter. If you have further questions, please do not hesitate to ask your teacher about it. And always, a reminder for all of you, wash your hands regularly, wear your face mask and face shield when going outside. Observe social distancing while outside your home. Sabi nga, tabalinsuela, my disciplina. This has been your host, Ma'am Susana B. Bulan, saying good day and goodbye. God bless. Good day, everyone. I would like to welcome you to another lesson on Health Grade 9 MAPE. Today, we are going to discuss the application of basic first aid for brain, brain, and heat exhaustion. Again, I am Pam Susana Bibulan, your FB Live streamer, and I welcome you for another lesson on basic first aid. Before we proceed, let us you some review of the previous lesson. Question number one. It is a physical trauma or damage to the body which is caused by an external force. One, two, three, four, five. That's up. And the answer is injury. If you got it, very good. Question number two. It is a collection of materials that are needed for basic first aid. One, two, three, 
four, five. And the answer is basic first aid kit. Got it? Question number three. What is the common cause of an injury? One, two, three, four, five. And the answer is accident. Accident is the common cause of an injury. Question number four. What are the common injuries caused by other, or uh, rather, overexposure to sunlight? One, two, three, four, five. If you do an activity under the sun that causes you headache and other sickness, then you are suffering from heat exposure or heat exhaustion. Question number five. The swallow cuts on wrist and suicide are example of this type of injury. One, two, three, four, five. The swallow cuts on wrist and suicide are injury done of a person unto himself. This injury is intentional, thus called intentional injury. Question number six. What do you call the first and immediate assistance given to an injured person? One, two, three, four, five. The first and immediate basic, uh, rather the first and immediate assistance given to an injured person is called basic first aid. If you had answered the question correctly, then I must say you have a Good memory, the past lesson. Two thumbs up. And now, what I want you to do is name the things we need in the basic first aid. Let's go. Can you name the following? Eyes. Eggs. Cotton balls. Microphone aid for securing a bandage or gauze is and the self-adhesive bandage goes to cover wound iodine solution for cleaning and antiseptic ink the wound triangular bandage for supporting a spin and a splint for immobilizing a fracture are you able to name all of them i hope so this will greatly help you in doing first aid. But what if you don't have these things? Can you improvise? What if you don't have cotton balls, bandage, or gauze at hand? What are you going to use as a substitute for them? You can use a tissue paper. Microport tape is used to secure a gauze, bandage, or splint in place. But, what if you don't have one? What you use? You can use a masking tape or any other adhesive tape for this. For immobilizing an injury like a fracture, we use a splint. But, what if you don't have one? What alternative are you going to use? Then, you can use an old carton box or magazine for this. For bandages, what are you going to use? Well, you can look for an old shirt and cut it into strips. Then, you have yourself a bandage. Ingenious, isn't it? Another ingenuity is this one. You can make an improvised triangular bandage by cutting a diagonal line, as shown in the picture, and on an old shirt. When you fold it after cutting, here is it. Now, that you can do improvisation, then it is time to apply them. Let's do basic first aid. 
For strain and sprain, here are the signs and symptoms. Pain in the joint or muscle, swelling and bruising, warmth and redness of the injured area, trouble moving the injured part. Here is what you are going to do. Make sure you to stop any activity right away. Think rise for the first 48 hours after the injury. Do you remember the rice method? The rice method press the injured part until it's less painful. Ice, wrap an ice pack or cold compress in a towel and place over the injured part immediately. Continue for no more than 20 minutes at a time, 4 to 8 times a day. Compression Support the injured part with an elastic compression bandage for at least 2 days. Elevation Raise the injured part above heart level to decrease swelling. Strain and sprain are accompanied by discomfort and pain. You may give the injured person an ibuprofen or acetaminophen to alleviate the suffering. In doing your performance output like a dance, sports, or other activities, you may sometimes encounter an accident resulting to an injured like a sprain or a sprain. This injury occurs most commonly on the ankle area. A strain and sprain can be secured in using a bandage. A bandage can apply pressure and immobilize. Don't worry if you are a first timer on this. Always remember the figure of 8 is tying the strips like the one in the picture. If you did it like this, then what you did is just fine. Just remember with a little pressure or compression but not too tight. But let's differentiate dressing from bandaging. Dressing used to cover wounds, prevent contamination and control bleeding. Bandaging covering wounds, applying pressure controlling bleeding, and supporting a strain or sprain. Here is a dressing. As said in its definition, it is used to cover wounds and stop bleeding. No wrap around of strips or bandage on the affected area. Look at the picture. Have you experienced doing an activity under the sign for a long period of time? How do you feel? Remember, do not let yourself under the sun too much. For sometimes, it results to heat exposure. And here are the signs and symptoms include cool, moist skin with goosebumps, when in the heat, heavy sweating, faintness, dizziness, fatigue, quick rapid pulse, low blood pressure upon standing, muscle cramps, nausea, and headache. Cool, isn't it? This is what a person suffering from heat exposure needs. I think you will find it refreshing too. Give the person water, cool water, but if the person painted, wet the lips only. Wait for the to regain consciousness before giving him water to drink. Use wet towel or sponge on face to pull him down. Starting fanning the patients, brother patient. This will hasten the cooling process and loosen the tight floating to help it from the body escape. If someone call a doctor, if the symptoms persist, 
or there is no response from the patient for a long period of time. Now, we have come to this point where we are going to find out what you had retained in your mind. Let's find out how much do you remember? Question number one. Tell which one is dressing and which one is bandaging. Five, four, three, two, one. Picture A is dressing, while picture B is bandaging. Question number two. Tell which part of the rice method are the following. A. Five. Four. Two. One. Picture A is press, compress, and elevate. For picture number letter B. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Picture B is of course. And for your assignment, you have to look for the meaning of each of these. What is recreational activity? A. Individual sports. B. Dual sports. C. Team sports. D. Hands. Give examples of each recreational activity. This concludes our lesson. We hope that this presentation has helped you a lot and that you can now perform the basic first aid for strain, brain, and heat exposure. This has been your FD Live streamer, I'm Susana Bibulan, thanking you all and reminding you of our basic health protocol. Wash your hands regu regularly Wear your mask, practice social distancing, at sa Valenzuela, bye, dina, good day, and God bless. Bye!